<clears throat> and then Miles, if you actually wind up, if you wind up finishing this early, you can like make up other poses, like different activities. I'm okay. Thinking, we're gonna draw like six or eight of these things, and then we're gonna use the structure to like fill fill out the figures. You'll see what I mean. It's um, it it's kind of like the tree sort of. I think if I ate it. Yeah. And then who's fourth and 38? Do I know you? I don't know you. Um, let's fire this up, y'all. Um, all right, I'm going to draw mine probably a little bit a little bit larger, but you don't need a lot of detail. Um, I think I know who fourth and 38 is. Who's that? Gills or Honey. Oh, cool. All right. If you want to put your name up there so it's easier for me, like you can, um, you don't have to. We're going to get like 30 kids in here. So um, I probably won't be able to treat everybody with like such individuality, at, you know, as we can right now. So if you have any questions, um, you know, fire it up. So <clears throat> I'm going to use a circle for the head. Um, and I'm going to acknowledge the fact that like a big part of the head is covered up by the symbol for the hand and the arrow. So I'm sketching the guy shooting the bow and arrow up here. Um, so just do a light circle. And then what I, the, the only thing that I actually don't like about, um, I don't like about these stick figures is that they don't include the neck. That's like my only, like, ah. my only complaint. So I'm actually gonna add the neck in and then, and then that neck is going to change direction. We're going to S curve down, and then we're going to build the um, guys. When you guys that are coming in, we we basically just started. It's good to see you all. Um, the only problem with this lesson is that you're never going to be able to say that you can't draw stick figures. What the heck? Like, I have so many. I have so many adults that come in. They're like, I can't even draw a stick figure. Well. We're gonna draw some figures. <clears throat> um, I'm right. also in the room. How's everybody doing? Please, please, um, please mute. 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 That would be great. Luke, did you say your person? Yeah. No. Let's see. Jack B, I'm muting you. No offense. No offense. Everybody, you can unmute yourselves. You have free reign. You can ask questions. Um, we're gonna sketch in some stick figures. And we're going to talk about how internal structure um, can lead to actual massing um, and full-blown silhouettes. So I, um, just to catch everybody up, I started with a circle for the head, knowing that it's going to have to get overlapped. So the way he defines the, the head is actually by the hair, which is wild. So we're going to go circle for the head, a little, a little dinky curve from like the head to the neck. And then we're going to get this large S curve. And that basically is the spine. And then we're gonna um, we're gonna build these legs off of the transition from the spine into the legs. Um, and that's gonna basically be like hip to knee, knee to ankle, and then a little foot. Um, shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist, and then he does give us a uh, suggestion of a hand by just doing a little dot. Um, frankly, I am a big fan of putting in the pelvis. And if you, all you do is put a little triangle in there, <clears throat> I think that it'll, it'll, it'll wind up serving us a lot better later. Um, all right, then we did shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist on the left hand, um, excuse me, the right hand. And then the arm is extended, shoulder to elbow, and then elbow to wrist. And then he's got another hand. This is where it's kind of fun. You get to build the arrow, um, excuse me, the bow. It's gonna be a curve. Ooh, maybe I should have curved it more. Last. And then you got the tight strings on either side. <clears throat> um, there is a little suggestion of the ear back here. And then all the rest is just like, I guess he's got dark hair. I guess you see a little bit of the front of the face. And then you do get the arrow, look at that. And I would actually even put in the arrow. 
So stick figures are like easy, but they're also no joke. I mean, they're not as easy as you might think. Like, look, if you look at my guy, I've been drawing for 40 years. I've been drawing figures for like, you know, 20. And I made the legs, I made his like, his whole torso too long. Now it's too long compared to this guy. There's plenty of people that have long torsos and short legs. Um, I'm just like pointing out that like, I'm trying to copy this thing. And, and it is a stick figure, relatively basic, um, but it's still not like the easiest thing. So um, it's a still like kind of a challenge. Um, all right, let's do figure number two, unless anybody's freaking out about figure number one. Um, if you got it wrong, don't worry. We're gonna, you're gonna get another shot. I mean, you could screenshot this and draw them later. You can invent your own uh, poses and everything. This guy seems like he's just like talking. <clears throat> and let's see if we can just, draw this nice guy having a conversation with himself. Um, all right, so we've got the circle for the head. Um, I'm finding the angle of his torso through the middle and then it kind of curves down near his belly. I'm gonna put that triangle in there and then we'll go from hip to knee. And I'm anticipating what I did last time is that I did not have the legs long. I made the legs short. So I'm gonna make the legs a little longer here he doesn't even give any, um, he just makes a separation between the sticks. Um, and you know, for there's a joint, wherever there's a joint, there's like a little separation. Again, these couldn't really be any simpler, um, but that's why we're warming up. Every line has an angle, a starting point and ending point. And you know, wherever there's a joint, there's a change of direction. Um, and like the ankle is a change of direction. He's got this little triangular shoe on this side actually looks like a shoe. This, this foot is just a, a short kind of rectangle. And you want to get the spirit of the pose. You want to like, you know, think this guy like looks, he's like kind of in a good mood. He's got his hand on his shoulder, um, hand on his elbow. So shoulder to elbow to shoulder to elbow, elbow to hip. He's got his hand on his hip. He's got a little dot here showing that there's a change shoulder to elbow, space, elbow to wrist. And then he's got a straight up hand on this side. And I think that that helps aid in the, the expression. Now there is a teeny suggestion of ears on either side. These look good. Yeah, so that's the other thing. If you guys do these all on the same plane, you can make these people different sizes and you can make them different relations. So you can make, you know, I'm looking at, I guess that's Miles, there's like an adult and then a kid. So there's like the, an adult instructing the kid on how to do the arrow. There's like, there's a lot you can do. Um, and these are fun art games that are not that much, are not that, are, you know, they communicate a lot of ideas and every, and they're on like a universal level. And it doesn't matter whether this is like your first stick figure draw, this first time drawing a figure or whether you're like 80, you still think about arranging people in these terms. This is the way you start a figure no matter what. Um, quickly, I'm gonna put ears on either side. I think that's important to, important silhouetted landmark. And then this kid, I guess, parts his hair in the middle. And whether you part, you know, whether you wanna keep that hairstyle or not, like give it your own hairstyle. It's just the, um, on every figure, when you, play, when you do the face, there's a, a little thing called the widow's yeah, peak and it helps define the middle of the face. So when there, when you don't have eyes, nose, mouth, you know, indicating the middle, he, the, the artist here is utilizing the hair to help suggest the middle. It's pretty cool. All right, third figure, this guy's, um, who knows what he's looking at. He's probably bird watching. Maybe he's looking at Mars. Um, I'm gonna do a circle for the face. It's in profile. Um, there's a gap. Um, I mean, he calls the neck basically one huge joint, which I don't think is appropriate. I mean, you got to be able to see the angle of the neck whenever you're drawing a figure. Um, and then we're going to arch his back. His, his back is arched significantly. Put in a little rectangle or a triangle for the pelvis. And then his knees, one knee is coming forward pretty aggressively. Hip to knee. Hip to knee. And then his other leg is going underneath him. So this is the kind of like the, the stand leg or the leg that's receiving a bunch of the weight. Hip to knee, knee to ankle, little triangle for that foot. 
<clears throat> shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist or the dot of the hand. And then just to make sure we're all on the same page, let's do um, a small, it's a, this is like a collapsible telescope. So that's a, it, they're like stacked rectangles. You can actually make this thing go. It looks like a telephoto lens. You don't even have to ever stop. Oh yeah, son. Okay, so now I put this on here. <clears throat> I'm gonna give this thing a tripod because it's so big. I was just making a telescope. Now he actually is looking at the moon. And there's a guy, he's like a nature guy, who you can, he'll come and bring out his telescope. He's t and when I, I haven't actually done it, he like offered, but I haven't followed up on it. Apparently it's better to look at the moon through a telescope when it's not the full moon, like when you have a shadow. So you can see all the, like the craters and stuff at the edge of the shadow of the moon. Um, I'm definitely digressing here. I apologize, but <clears throat> the inspiration, you know, these, these, these poses should, you know, inspire you. Um, all right. So that was his right arm. I'm going to claim that's his right arm. And then I'll just make the left arm a little bit smaller and a little bit below. So now, now I'm like self criticizing here and like, yeah, you know, his arms look a little long to me, especially his forearm. Let's see, Miles. Cool. Very cool. <clears throat> um, all right. How's there, is everybody good? All right, excellent. Um, let's do one more set of these stick figures. I don't think it's gonna hurt. Um, it's 1221, let me check my schedule here. Oh, you know, I lost complete track of time. No, no, wow. you're fine. Um, I'm going strong on these and I think the next round is actually very, are, are like pretty doable. So, and they're like pretty expressive. Oh my God, this kid's about to get shot with an arrow. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it, this guy's hair looks, the, the guy with his, with his hands up, it looks like he's wearing a like, uh, like a hat. Like these two figures look like they're hats, whereas these clearly look like hair. And I think the one that we just did, looking at the telescope, looking through the telescope, almost oh. looks like a beret. Correct. Yeah, he's got a hat on too. Yeah. All right, so it's twelve twenty. It's twelve twenty-two. Um, I'm going to keep drawing the ones that I want to do, but I'm exposing more of the figures. So if you want to choose ones on your own, you know, I just I just revealed five extra ones. So you can fit. You know, you can you got the hang of it now. So you can like fix them and arrange them in um, you know in an order that. Um, make sense to your picture. I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna go from top to bottom. Oh, look at this dude lifting weights. Um, oh, I like that. Yeah, I do too. <clears throat> the other thing that um, you have talked about in the past, Trevor, yeah. that I'm seeing very clearly on my paper is that from the first figure to the second to the third, I can see a progression of confidence in the drawing of each figure. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you should be getting, if you stick with the idea and you're like, you know, you want to, you want to make the left leg about the same size as the right leg, you know, and it doesn't matter whether you're giving a lot of detail or, or little detail, like there's going to be, you know, it's a, humans are bilaterally symmetrical. So they've got to have the same proportion. So if the left arm is the same as the right arm. Um, if it's turned away from us, you know, if like, if it's like at a weird angle, things are different. Um, but let's just, let's just try this one. Okay. The other interesting thing, this, this guy's head seems like it's more of an oval than a circle. And I'm going to quickly add the hairline or the edge of the hat, however you want to see it. And even, even if it helps you guys, you may even add like a, you know, a, a little L, an L shape for the the nose, a little dot for the eye and the dot for the mouth. I mean, why not? It's not like it's that hard. Um, it, it'd still be super simple. So then this guy's head is behind his pelvis. So the angle of his rib cage is going forward and he's like throwing his head back because it looks like he might be startled. <clears throat> oh, look at that guy. This guy's got, they do give him a little triangle in there. The pelvis is so important, like the, 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 the hips in terms of um, 
its angle ultimately when you're drawing figures. Um, all right, so the right leg is coming forward, hip to knee, and then the knee to the ankle is almost a vertical. <clears throat> so I'm trying to think in terms of uh, almost angles. Like you don't have to calculate them, but you have to be like, this is angled down and to the right. Then there's a break and this is angled down to the right ever so slightly further. And then this foot, the left foot is flat on the ground. The left foot is, you know, is not flat on the ground. And look at how my feet, um, these feet are go side by side. Mine's at a different angle. So I made something too long. I guess I made this right leg too long. It's all good. Like again, this is just, this is just trying to um, get accustomed to seeing that every, the body has these limbs that have these major masses. Shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist, thumb, palm, and then one, two, three, four fingers. That's interesting. Shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist, almost straight up in the air. And then he gets a little thumb on the inside. I'm putting a rectangle for the palm. And then one, two, three, four fingers. Sweet. <clears throat> oh, I like that palm. Thank you. You're welcome. It's ne it's like so necessary. Um, all right, so we're going we're going until 1:30 on these stick figures, and then we're gonna I'm gonna show you how the stick figures guide you to fill out the full silhouette. Um, you'll you'll understand when I do it. Um, oh, that's this is cool. Okay, so this guy is standing. He's like a bean pole. He's got the circle of his head you know, his shoulder, basically his torso down to his pelvis is one straight line. And then I'm going to put that triangle in there. Hip to knee, hip to knee, very close together. And then knee to ankle, knee to ankle. I separated him a little bit because it just, but then his ankles are touching, not his ankles, his heels are touching. Two little triangles, that looks good. <clears throat> Besides, if you're lifting weights, you should probably get a wider base anyway. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was just gonna say, his this is like nineteen. Feet. This is like this. Is, this book. This book is from nineteen oh four. I don't. I don't think people were crushing the weight room in nineteen oh four the way they are now. <laughs> <laughs> Those feet need to be shoulder width apart. All right, shoulder to elbow, and then I'm gonna do, and then I'm gonna angle it back in like this because this is how I would do it. Shoulder, to elbow, elbow to wrist. And then he gives us a hand and then he's got a dumbbell on either side. And I'm gonna do shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist and give a little hand. And then I'll do a dumbbell that way. <clears throat> I should have given him a wider base, but I didn't think of it. So do you see how I modified my, I modified my arm? <clears throat> you can modify all of these arms. All the legs and all the arms are 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 there to um, change. And the other thing is that if I were to, if you were to drop it, you know, that would be another acceptable angle. And then it would drop down here, and you get this sense of movement. And all this in the the joint. Anyway, there's, you can actually have it. And you get the swing of this movement. Oh, that's kind of cool. I'm, I'm considering. Oh, that. that's really cool. Thank you, Stace. <clears throat> um, I'm getting like uh, the jaw, elbow in the corner to the chin, jaw, elbow to the corner of the chin. And then we've got the ears. And then he's got that parted hairline again. All right, I got two minutes. I'm gonna sketch one more dude, and then and then we're gonna switch over and actually do realistic silhouettes. So we're gonna still use the stick figure to start the figure drawing, um, and then we're gonna fill it out into figurative silhouettes. So let's just do this one more, and we might have we might actually come back to these. Circle for the head, arc for the spine, triangle for the pelvis, right leg forward. Stand leg straight up and down, foot. Left leg, 
vertical, knee to ankle, and then the foot. I'm gonna say this is his right arm forward, shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist. Mr. Twist, check out my yeah. drawing. Oh, I, I think I don't have one thing over there. Looks good, dude. What's that guy doing? He's reaching for the end zone to score a touchdown. No, no, no way. I thought, dude, I thought he was diving. I thought I saw someone diving. That's fantastic. All right, hold on. Something's going on with my... Uh, oh, I have it totally zoomed in. That's why. Oh, my gosh. What happened? Thank you. <laughs> Looking good, boys. Very nice. And if you hold yours up and you don't hear me comment, you know, Stacy, Miss Stacy, come on back. <coughs> Stacy's my photographer. What is this? I'm gonna make this a I'm gonna make this a spear. He's gonna be battling an alligator from the bayou. I like that. I'm thinking I'm back in Florida with that alligator. He's trying to defend his puppy. The alligator. Oh, ate. you're right. <laughs> Did you guys see that video? That dude who went and wrestled an, al an alligator basically ate his dog. And then he jumped in and wrestled the dog away from this alligator. It was like. Yeah most courageous thing I've ever seen. It was, it went viral on YouTube a little while ago, but I was, and he had, and the dude had a, uh, yeah, he was like golfing. He didn't even, he didn't skip a beat. <clears throat> All right. So it's one thirty one. So work out, you know, finish out your guy and then we're going to go over and actually draw a figure that looks like a person. I got to get a fresh piece of paper. Oh, hold on. Oh, you want me to put that back up? I would love for you to put that back up. I get the hands of my the big guy. Hi, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Let's oh, wow. Do, um, let's do the girl on the sled first. And, and it doesn't necessarily need to be a girl because that could either be a ponytail or it could be a hat. Um, I'm not quite sure. All right, but either way, <clears throat> uh, gentlemen, these look good. Stace, there's a couple people holding out. I think it's Miles. Okay, okay, hold on, gentlemen. Miles, let's see that. Okay. All right, so I need everybody to just like, stay in the mindset, stay in the frame of mind of the stick figure. And we're just gonna do what we just have, what we, what we just did. Okay, so we're gonna do a circle for the head. We need a little angle for the nose. I'm gonna get a curve for her back or his back, whatever. Put a little triangle down here. And then we're gonna go from hip to knee. <clears throat> I'm gonna go from knee to ankle. And then I'm gonna go from ankle to the little triangle of the foot. Um, <laughs> I guess we don't have to worry about the arms. That's funny. Um, but we do have to worry about the neck and we do have to worry about the face. So let's do, um, there's like, I gotta, I'm gonna say that this is a hat. So I'm gonna find that, mm -hmm. you know, the rounded hat part that we had done before. <clears throat> Julian. Julian's back in. Hello, Julian. Welcome back, dude. Sorry about that. You, didn't, you weren't waiting too long, were you? Okay. Um, we're going to come down this face, and I'm going to use a uh, backwards L for the nose, and then I'm going to use a little smile for the mouth. I'm going to build out here from the hat using these little trapezoids. I'm gonna kind of build the silhouette. <clears throat> and so this is kind of the new concept here. Some of you guys have heard me talk about silhouettes before, but we're actually drawing the drawing. Um, 
by coloring it in. So hopefully this starts to make sense. So I've got the hat, I've got the face. There's no smile because it's all black. You got the nose. Now I'm gonna fill in that neck. And I'm gonna go into her shoulders or his shoulders. And then I'm gonna use I'm gonna use the arc of her spine to help build out the shapes that I see. I got, a, I got a mute. There we go. <clears throat> so I wish that I could see her arms. I really do because that, like, we just did a, you know, we just did all this work, um, you know, positioning arms. And I guess in this one, we don't really have to do it. Um, I think it would be worthwhile also to draw the, um, like, the shape of the sled. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that. All right, so we've got the, we got like her little jacket back here, this little tush. And then we're gonna come up and do the trapezoid of the legs. It's gonna fill that in. And again, we don't have any details. Like we really don't have um, much to go on. All we have is the outline, which is the silhouette. And we're gonna, um, we're gonna practice, you know, largely the silhouette, but when you sketch figures, you can't just start with the silhouette because you have to have the proportions. And by having our basic stick figure, then we know that our, you know, the shapes that are the legs and the shapes that are the feet, you know, can be, can be filled out and they're gonna be kind of in the right place. And if the leg's too long, the leg's too long. <clears throat> um, this is just a, this is an exercise. And I wouldn't call it necessarily a warm up because we're probably warmed up at this point, but. Okay, I, I must I, say, I am loving this. I mean, the, I, I, I mentioned this in my class, in my classes earlier in the week. Silhouettes are, are like, it's a method of drawing that you can use when things are really complex and you're trying to simplify it. And, when you know when you all you have to worry about is the outline and filling the outline in then you know then other th then the, the rest of it kind of becomes a little bit easier <clears throat> and then when, as you draw the outline you slowly begin to learn about what it is the object that you're drawing oh is menelik isn't there is he i don't think he takes two classes in a week i found i i mentioned to menelik yesterday that the uh that I did this silhouette of an owl and I actually found the drawing. I'll show it to you guys next week. <clears throat> All right, so there's the hat. There's the brow into the nose, nose into the lips, lips into the chin. <laughs> oh man, that's wild. I can't tell, I mean, I don't know. I don't think I did that great on this one. I think I made the, uh, I think I made her spine possibly a little bit too long. But she looks like she's sledding. <sighs> Have you guys ever gone to St. Paul? Have you ever been sledding on St. Paul's Hill? Oh, dude, you gotta go. <clears throat> All right, 137. I think we got time for one more. Dude, how's everybody doing on this? Are you freaking out? Can I see the... Uh, no, nah, that's good. That looks good. Um, the thighs are a little, um, Miles, your yeah, thighs are Miles. a little short for some reason. Where did you go, Miles? Thick. Oh, there you are. You might be able to modify that. <clears throat> um, you can also put mountains in the background. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mine looks like she needs to be leaning forward more. Or perhaps it's simply not a steep slope. I think it's actually just a hard drawing. A hard <laughs> Thank <drawing>. you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Will you show your space? Uh, sure. I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe it can help. I'm trying to make her legs a little thicker. So I need, think I need to be on screen share. Is that correct? Oh, that's you showing it. Yeah, those are awesome, Stacey. Goodness. You, you drop it down so we can see oh. the, 
So you can see. Oh, 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 oh. The sledding bee, sledding guy. <clears throat> yeah, that looks awesome. All right, cool. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Um, do you guys want to try? Do you guys want to try a uh, an animal? Let's try an animal. So I know we're on a, we're on a human kick, but I kind of want to make it a little bit. I mean, I need I need a little variation. If you were in Mr. Twist's class last night, we did one of these. We did, and I've been teaching it to all my students, and they're just like loving it, and it's really they're just good lessons. <clears throat> all right, so this one looks like it's like might be a little bit. I don't know if it's like more complicated or less complicated, but um, it's the inverse of what we just did. So instead of filling in um, the inside dark, we're gonna fill the, we're gonna draw the outline, um, we're gonna draw the, the background dark. So the, uh, the, the object itself is gonna stay. What should we do? Do you guys wanna do the, um, the ostrich or the rhino? Rhino. Rhino it is, all right. Let's fire this up. Um, the most definitive thing about rhinos are the, um, you know, the horns. And then we got to, in order to draw the horns, we're kind of thinking, I'm thinking of the space between the horns and the ears. And I'm thinking about the space between the ears as well. Ah. It's crazy, because like, it's a different mentality than what we just did. Which is kind of the yes, point. it really is. And hopefully, I'm not, you know, making it too hard for anybody. But I drew the horn, and it's going to come down to the lip. And I'm I'm acknowledging that this is like the corner of my picture. And you go from the lip down to the throat, and then I don't know what this is. Is this just like loose skin? Oh, oh, I see where you are. It's like the neck. No. Double chin, maybe. I, I, you know, I don't know. <clears throat> All right, so I just followed the, uh, like the bottom of the chin down through the jaw. And then the jaw, I went into the, that, I guess, loose skin around the neck. And then from the neck, I'm going down into the legs. And in order to draw the rhino, in order to make the rhino light, it's gotta be up against a dark background. And then what I love about, like what I really like about this style is that um, it's kind of, it's kind of like kind of calming. Because you have so much of the background to shade. Now, if you guys started drawing really big, it might take you longer. And I probably should have made a reference to that. Um, I'm drawing really small, so it's easy for me to fill it in. <clears throat> All right, let's go down his back. We're gonna go from the ears to the neck the neck to the haunch, which is this little nub on his shoulders, the shoulder blades. I'm gonna come around the rib cage, just kind of concave. Then we're gonna go into his rear end, which helps lead us into the tail. So you don't have to, if you don't get all the parts, it's all right. It's more that you like kind of make a line and then you're making that line part of the background. <clears throat> Whereas over here, we've made the sled, the line of the outline became part of the sled. Whereas here, the line becomes the background. It's like a, it's like a yin yang, light and dark. So yeah. uh, when you when you draw, 
you're making the line around something, but then that line ultimately has to be part of the object or part of the background. So it's interesting to see the two. <clears throat> All right, so I've been looking at the space between the legs. You know, that's a big rounded rib cage. And then I get the left leg, draw an outline around that. And I get this little space between the left leg and the right leg. Um, and so I don't know if you guys have noticed, but my lessons are intentionally going from easy to hard. So if this is like hard for you, it's, it's, it's on purpose. Um, and just don't, <laughs> just don't, just don't freak out. Honestly, this is hard for me. Um, at least if, as long as you got the horn and the ears, it should be in good shape. I mean, look how skinny my leg is. I mean, I'm going to have to probably erase that. <clears throat> and then the next round, because we got the younger guys coming in. So the next round is going to be some silhouettes and it's going to be um, a lot easier. So just if this is if this if you're struggling with this, don't get frustrated to the point of wanting to like stop or anything. Um, we've, we can do this for like five more minutes and then we're going to switch over for the younger guys. And we're going to still do silhouettes, but I've got um, I've got a bunch of really cool animals to do. That should be um, you should be very, very well warmed up for that. We've got a turtle, we've got a saw shark, we've got a whale. There's some good stuff coming down the pipe. I mean, yeah. I ha I'm happy with my my rhino. I, I do want to erase this leg and make it thicker. Yeah, I think I think my rhino is a little too long, but some rhinos, I don't know. I'm just letting my rhino be. All right, boys. So this is like a this is a two minute warning, and then I'll show you the uh, the next one that we're gonna do. <clears throat> hey, Alden, what's up, man? Um, this is I've given the two minute warning. We're about to start a new drawing, and then some of the other guys are starting to draw. Some of the other guys. Yes. <laughs> Uh, some of you guys that just came in, please remember to mute your uh, your screen. Thank you so much. And then we're just finishing this up and we're going to switch over. We're going to do, um, we're actually going to do silhouettes that are kind of like this. Um, but we're, instead of drawing the rhino, we're going to do um, some sculptures. So I have some like these little sculptures. So one more minute for the guys that have worked on this. And then if anybody did have a successful run, if you want to hold it up and show Stacy, that would be cool. I'd love to see how it went. <clears throat> okay. Miles, can you hold it down just a little bit and a little uh, toward you and down just a little bit. There we go. Thank you. <clears throat> nice guys. Um, all right. So uh, gentlemen that just came in, um, a little word of advice. Um, there's going to be a bunch of shading in here. So kind of start drawing on like the smaller side of things. Um, and then I'll show you what we're going to do. We're going to do a turtle first. Paper too. Yeah, grab some paper, get some pencils. Eraser is nice. I don't always use erasers, but um, they're very helpful. All right. I love my eraser. I love my eraser too. All right, on your marks, get set. <laughs> Draw. All right, so um, just to fill everybody in, we've been drawing um, essentially what are called silhouettes. So it's where you take a very complex subject that's got all this detail. There's all these plates. There's all these like little toes. There's like the eyes, everything. Um, we're going to try and draw it, but we're going to try and draw it with um, just the outline. Yeah. How do you know? All right, here we go. Guys, make sure you um, mute that. Mute that. Cool. Good to see you all. 
All right, here we go. Whew. I'm seeing Mr. Twist. Yes, maybe Mark. just whenever somebody comes in, you just click the mute all button. That's a good call. And let me find it. Yeah. Mute all. You'd think it would be in the mute. You'd think it'd be under mute. I don't know. It's fine. <clears throat> All right. So let's do first things first. I'm looking at the guy's head and we're going to sketch this little, it's like a rectangle for the neck. And then I see also the face being like a triangle. So this is both a warm up for the new guys. And then this should be some like um, a nice, you know, finisher upper for the, um, the dudes that have already been in here. <clears throat> okay. So again, we're not worrying about, um, we're not worrying about any of the details. We're just gonna fill these things in, but I wanna get a couple more, I wanna get a couple more shapes in here. Um, let's do the shell. Cool. <clears throat> um, whenever you're doing something that's round, um, it's curvy, as an artist, and in an attempt to simplify things, I always fall back on straight lines. So I don't know if you guys can see what's happening here, but I'm going straight across, seeing an angle at the shoulder. I know that that's the, that's the angle where these legs are gonna come out of. And then I get the long ways of the side of the body. It's gonna angle back in on both sides, doing left side, right side. And then I'm gonna cap off his shell right there. Nice. <clears throat> um, and your shell can be big, your shell can be small. This is just, I mean, I got this sculpture. It's actually a pretty decent sculpture when it comes down to it. I just got it from Michael's. Um, and these guys do study the anatomy. Um, and I know it seems a little like almost a little childish or cheesy, but they do attempt to make them kind of, I mean, look at this guy's toes over here. Is the, the toes go from big to small. Let's do these other parts. All right. So I'm gonna do a rectangle for the um, elbow to wrist. And I'm gonna do another one that angles, that's a different angle from elbow to wrist. And then I'm gonna build out this hand. One, one long finger, two long fingers, three long fingers, four. Nice, one long finger, two long finger, three, four. I mean, I don't know what, but they're making it look like this thing's got a thumb. <clears throat> All right, so here, this is, the, uh, this is the goal, is to get a total silhouette. So I'm just gonna correct my drawing by filling it in. <clears throat> I'm not even gonna worry about any of these details. I'm gonna blend the shell into the leg. And then, um, and then the, the leg into those toes. I guess they're technically fingers. And then where I did have a straight line, I can round it out as I fill it in. So the lesson for today, gentlemen, that just came in, um, I'll explain it even further um, as we go on to the project after these animals. <clears throat> the focus is to think about the silhouette and you know, only focus on that silhouette. And it's when you can draw things that are like super complicated, but you only have to worry about one component. And in this case, it's the outline and filling it in. Oh my gosh, I got a fun one. I got to find the, uh, <clears throat> I have, an, I have a uh, iguana that's actually super good. Okay, let's do these back feet. Um, I'm seeing like it starts like a it starts like a rectangle, but then it turns into a point. And I don't know what what shape is that? It almost looks like a wedge shape. It's like the ankles, it's like the leg comes out and the ankles like turn under. That's fascinating. Um, you see more of the back feet, one foot, one toe, two toes, three toes, four. Don't forget about the tail, that's hilarious. It's gonna be a triangle. 
at a certain length. How many toes on that side? You have four on this side too. One, two, three, four. So you want to rely on your own, you know, sensibility. And if the, the line part doesn't look right, um, you can make up for a lot of the problems as you color it in. So I'm forced to go off of the screen. Jonathan, the drawing that we're doing, this is turtle. Oh, so unlucky. Turtle. Um, by the way, uh, Teddy, welcome. Um, this is the turtle was my first word. That's what no. My, that's what my mom says. Oh. The turtle was my first word. I don't know. I mean, I've always liked turtles. <clears throat> so I know some of you, um, there's the exercise, which is the silhouette. So we're just going to color this in. And I'm all about um it's yeah blending. i really like blending if you guys have anything let's just wait it, for this to be over you can right. do a yeah. I can't. You can blend with your finger um you can also blend with um a, a ripped piece of paper like if you got like a little um like actually just a corner of a piece of paper and you roll it up tight and then fold it it just creates a uh, like a soft blended blending stump. That's all this is is a is a tightly rolled piece of paper. You can also not blend it. You can blend with your um, just with your pencil itself. All right, I'm gonna say. Again, hopefully you guys did draw pretty small this time. Anybody finish? Anybody finish yet? Not yet. Okay. Take your yeah, time. Just so you know, Trevor, I have uh, five up to. All right, sweet. Let me check the sketch. Oh yeah, cool. Five of two. Right. So that we're that's right on time, Stace. Yes, you indeed. <laughs> I love, I love a good plan. I do love a good plan. Um, there's a, yeah, but I was going to say something else too. I'm like such a sucker for um, shadows. Like I love doing shadows and that's not what this exercise is about, but you could maybe, I, add, yeah. I don't know. Don't do it. Don't do the shadow. Don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. You guys want to try? You guys want to try an easy one or a hard one? Let's do. Let's do a medium size one, and then I think some of you guys may have actually done this before, but. Just as a reminder, if everyone could mute themselves. We got it. We got it. Very good. One one minute warning, gentlemen. One minute. We got awesome shapes coming up. I promise. All right. For some of you who have already. Yeah, my favorite. Are you the hard finish? Um, leave the leave the turtle. Dude, that's for. You see that, Declan? Very nice. Thank you. All right. So this is a um. This is a saw shark. Mister Twist. Yes. I think that um the first group's time is almost up. I you think we have are, two minutes. I thought you guys went to two ten. Does the first group go to two ten or two o'clock? Can you guys confirm that? It's all right. Um, if you guys have to leave, just drop off and I will uh, see you all next week. <clears throat>
All right, boys. So let's figure out this one. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna start with a. We're gonna start with the saw. We're basically gonna go from uh, the the top to bottom. All right. So let's do a trapezoid for the saw. And then we're going to quickly move into what I would consider his face. And that's going to be, and if you look at it from the side, I'll show you, there's a, there's a wider trapezoid. <clears throat> and I'm just going to put a little dot here because that's actually where his eyes are, um, even though you can't see it from this angle. Um, and then we're going to go from those eyes, we're going to go angle back and that's going to end <clears throat> at the gills which are right here and the start of the body so you know like the head the neck sharks it's like where does the head end where does like the body begin i'm just declaring this whether it's like anatomically correct or not <clears throat> um all right so just to fill just to like recap really quickly we did a long trapezoid for the saw and then we're doing a short trapezoid from the saw to the eyes. And I'm putting the dot for the eyes. Then we go from the eyes back down to the end of the gills, which is also the start um, of our body. So I wanna get, um, and frankly, it's the start of our fins on either side. So I'm breaking this thing down into different shapes. Um, let's do the length of the body. It's gonna, it, at this point, it's like almost like a rounded parent, you know, it's like a rounded parentheses. And then until it gets to this back fin, um, it stays pretty wide. <clears throat> and then it's gonna angle in steeply until you can, hopefully you can see that the fin gets narrow. So that's the back tail fin. So it goes from, um, small to wider to wider, and then it gets widest um, right at those fins. So what I'm doing is I'm translating what is all one kind of form, like it's all one shark, but I'm subdividing it into its component parts um, so that we can shape, you know, so that we can it, we can find the proportions. <clears throat> All right, the, I know it's a, let me turn it on its side just so you can kind of see what's actually going on too. Wow, look how flat the bottom is. That's amazing. Okay, so this is the um, saw part from the side, very, very flat. And then from the end of the saw to the eye, that's there. Then we go from the eye to the back of the gills, which we've, which I've lined up. Um, and then it goes from the back of the gills all the way down to the back fin where I'm just gonna claim that the, the tail begins. And then it goes from the tail all the way to the tip. And then it's almost like the body stops and then it turns into that actual tail that like juts off at that angle. That's really interesting. Um, again, we're gonna be filling this thing in. So whatever lines you have, <clears throat> um, you know, that's all right. We don't even have to erase them because we're just gonna, um, we're just gonna fill them in. <clears throat> I have sketched this before and what I realized was is that the, the arm fins, like these side fins, they look almost exactly like the, um, like the, a shark fin where it like sticks out of the water, you know, like it's, it's, yeah. this is a dorsal fin. What is this one called? Is that a dorsal fin? I don't know. Like the fin that if you see it coming at you, you're going to be scared. I've never actually, I've seen a barracuda in the ocean down when I was uh, snorkeling in Florida. It's time for me to go. All right, cool. Um, have, a, uh, have a great week. Have a good week. We hope we see you next week. And Fun enjoy the, the snow. If, Thank you. If you have uh, some snow, you. enjoy it. <clears throat> I think Miles might be the only one who's doubling up with um, in classes. Okay. But gentlemen, just, just so you know, I have a class. I teach a, a class, a Gilman class on uh, Tuesdays as well at four o'clock. So you can sign up for that if you want. <clears throat> you just have to ask your parents.
All right, so now this is where it becomes, well, it's, it's like all of these shapes um, can be big or small and it's gonna be fine. This is where you have to use a little bit of artistic ability and whatever, whatever you make this pin look like, um, you, the key is to make it equal on both sides. And that is where it's like a little bit hard. Um, you know, make sure the back is relatively straight. Back is straight. Um, it almost looks like a, uh, it looks like, like an airplane wings. And they really do kind of fly, but they like fly in the water, which is, you know, different. But, you know, the, the principle is the same. It's just a diff different atmosphere. Um, these back, the, 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 these fins, they remind me more of like shark's teeth. You know, instead of like a, a rounded side and a flat side on these fins, these fins are almost more like equilateral triangles. And again, I don't actually care what shape you use as long as they're kind of similar on both sides. Nice, 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 nice. <clears throat> Maybe that tail fin needs to be a little longer. Um, all right, and then I missed this in the beginning, but I think the sharks, the sharks saw, you know, it would make sense that it comes to a point. I think it is a point. <clears throat> and then, gentlemen, the uh, the exercise which we're going to explore, um, we're going to do one more animal after this, and then we're going to look at some trees. Um, the whole point is to fill these in. So I hope, hopefully, you are using a um a, a shark that's a little bit small but if it's not it's okay you can you can shade quickly i'm gonna erase the eyes on the outside because you really it's i did that because i needed you to like see the anatomy but you do not see the eyes from this angle <clears throat> and again just by filling this in it allows you to see the 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 fish or the shark as a whole and see how all these like separate subdivided pieces is gonna blend them all together. And if you, you know, if you have um, like this one was a little bit too, too short. So I'm just going to make it a little bit long so I can extend it out. I can, I can correct my guidelines um, in the shading process. And that's a really important thing to know too, because sometimes, you know, when you make line drawings, you're like, ah, is it good enough to go on? And you're like, it might not be like, it might be some mistakes, um, but know that you can correct them when you get into the next phase. And so you just have to get it good enough to get to the next phase of the drawing. Or the painting or the sculpture or whatever it is you're doing. So now I'm really trying hard to make these equal on both sides. If I make one bigger, then I gotta make the other one bigger. Well, not necessarily. <clears throat> that looks good. Oh, all right, now this is gonna be the best part. Um, I don't know if you want to start with little teeth at the top um, and go down, or if you want to start with big teeth. I think I'll probably start with big teeth. I'm going to make them symmetrical. Um, and my attempt is to make these triangles get smaller as I go, because that's the order that I can kind of see it. And I, it looks like my saw shark, they're a little bit too spaced out, but they're just triangles. And I'm blending, I'm doing left side and right side. And so my spacing might be a little bit too wide, but at least it's symmetrical. So the left side and the right side are the same. I think that I'm holding that in higher priority than having the teeth exactly positioned right. Cool. All right, it's two. 210 or it's 209 <clears throat> this 
Stacy and I <clears throat> have been kind of because of the overlap of the guys, like it's like important that we kind of stay relatively close to the time frame. Um, and we are on point today. Spot on. Let's see that, Bruce. Oh, oh yeah. Cool, man. That's nice. Cool. Thank you. It looks like it looks like you could go a little bit bigger with the fins with your, your at least the the big like the initial fins. I noticed that one. I won't make you do this, but I almost wanted to do this whale. Look how sick this whale is. It's like such a good sculpture and it comes from Michael's. It probably costs like a, less than a dollar. I mean, I'm telling you, the, these sculptures are actually really good. <clears throat> All right, turtle, saw shark. I'm gonna give a uh, I'm gonna give like a two minute two minute warning on this one for some of you guys. That, nice, who is that down there? Oh, oh, I missed oh. one. No, no, no. I know how to put everybody's name up. There's a. I was supposed to do this, <laughs> Kristen. There's a. There's a. There's a. Um, hold on. As you guys are doing this, I'm gonna try and put everybody's name up because this is like it's too oh, hard. Henry, did you put yours up? Henry, did I miss yours? No. Uh, okay. You can see it if you want to. I would love to. Yes. Oh, Henry, nice, bro. Thank you. Very nice. I like the exaggerated uh, triangles, the saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Honestly, ferocious. You can, the bigger the saw, like you kind of can't go wrong with that. It's like, that's what. Okay, is. Teddy, hold that still. Thank you, Teddy. Nicely done. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna go back to the uh, we're gonna go back to land, um, and we're gonna do some um, some figures. We're gonna do some stick figures if you guys are cool with that. Let's see. Is um, yeah. So. Like I was telling the other guys, the only problem with doing stick figures and learning how to do stick figures is that you can't say, I can't even draw a stick figure. <laughs> so that's the, and I get so many, I get so many adults that come in and they're like, my kid is really talented and I can't even draw a stick figure. I'm like, well, why don't you take a class? <clears throat> All right, here we go, gentlemen. Um, we're gonna do this first row. Yes. Cool. And that other drawing could be embellished on like this, the saw shark. You can put that in an environment like you could do other fish from up above. You could put starfish on the bottom. You could put shells. I mean, <clears throat> you could really take it far. Um, but this is like this is the main lesson. Um, and I think we're going to we're going to build off of these stick figures. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to the nice thing is, is that we have less shapes this time. And we have, um, there's still shapes exist, but they're basically, they're basically, you know, making sticks in an arrangement um, that will look like a person doing an activity. So, you know, oh, stick with me for a second. <clears throat> okay. Uh, you like that, Stace? Thank you. Good. That was good. Um, all right. Let's see. This is perfect. Anybody else that's coming in, um, we're just starting, we're just starting fresh. I think that was an Andrew. All right, so um, gentlemen, the first one we're gonna do is at the top, we're gonna do this bow and arrow guy. And we're gonna start with a light circle. And we're gonna kind of find all the cues that he's doing. Um, he's indicating like the top of the head and his face by the hair. But unlike the other characters in this scheme, his face is covered up by the bow, um, the hand, um, and like an arm. So. Um, we're going to come back to the face, but just right now, use a circle. Um, and then the next move is going to be to draw from <clears throat> whenever there's a joint, he leaves an empty space. So he's also emptying. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, goodness. Stacey. Yeah. Good. She must be walking the dog. <laughs> it's hilarious. Okay. Um, so we got the circle for the head. 
And then the next row is basically the spine. Now the spine includes the neck. So if you wanted to actually attach, you know, the neck to the head, I'm a fan of that. You know, they're trying to like really keep this um, simple, but I still think you need to have the neck. All right, so it goes from head to neck and then it's gonna S curve down the spine. And you can imagine like, you know, the way that the curve of a human's um, you know, spinal cord goes, it is an S curve. And then my other modification to the stick figure is gonna be this little triangle. And the triangle is like very simplified. It represents the pelvis or the hip bones. And I think it's important to keep. Okay, so now here comes the fun part. Um, we got sticks that represent the hip to the knee and then knee to the ankle. Every limb in a human body um, has like a general directional push. Um, and you want to be able to, you want to be able to draw what that angle is. And it takes a little bit of practice. Um, so this front leg is nearly vertical. And then this one angles down into the left. Now his left side leg, his right leg goes hip to knee. And then it goes from knee to ankle. So their arrangement, my legs are a little bit further apart because I put the triangle in there, but that's fine. Um, and then both of his feet are flat on the ground. And that actually is relatively good for <laughs> when you're shooting um, you know, a bow and arrow. Like you wanna be, have a, a solid foundation. Um, shoulder to elbow, it's gonna angle up a little bit. And then there's this empty gap at the turn of the elbow. If you wanted to put like a little rubber band curve or a little bump for the elbow, that would be fine. And then it goes elbow to wrist. And then in this case, he, um, the artist is just representing the hand as like a dot. Some of the other poses actually show and have the hand, but we're in a position where we're overly simplifying. All right, here we go. Then it goes from shoulder to elbow and then there's gonna be a little gap. So that's the elbow. And then I'll go from elbow to wrist. And then his hand is on the bow. So the fun part for me, I feel like is like, you know, putting the archery bow, the wooden part of the bow in his hand and it's pulled back taut. And then, oh, and you can do the strings to each corner. It's got to be, I don't know why that doesn't look right. I feel like the, the string at the top and the string at the bottom should be equal. And I did not draw it that way. Um, attached to the hand is the, the beginning of the bow, excuse me, the beginning of the arrow. And then you get the arrowhead. <clears throat> Um, one of the things that we could do, if you wanted to, you can line your draw your figures up on a um, on a ground plane, and then the more drawings you get, the, some figures can be tall, some figures can be short, some can be adults, some can be kids. It all depends on their proportion. So let me just move over here um, and show this next kind of figure in the row, which I think is a, which is kind of a funny one. So we're actually making a composition now. So this is like a guy with a bow and arrow. Um, and he's like holding this guy up. He's like, you know, freeze. And he's like, okay, um, don't shoot. So the, um, the guy who's got his hands up, you actually see the fingers in his hands. Um, so let's try to make a figure that's about the same size. So, oh, yeah, sorry. Let's finish the hair though. The way I did the hair is I just put a little um, outcropping for the ear. So I think the ear is there. Let me see if I can zoom in further. Is it possible to zoom in? Can't get that far. All right, bear with me, gentlemen. <clears throat> I'm going to cut the edge of this paper off so I have more room. Oh, look at the guy carrying the pail, the bucket. I hadn't seen him. Stay, don't I, spoil I had, it. You're oh, spoilers. God. You had it. You had it exposed. I know. I know. 
All right, so we got this uh, ear, and we got the hair with his flow that's in the back, and then you got the hair on the top of his head, and then <clears throat> down into the sideburns. And there's really not much indication of the face. I put in like a little, little notch for the nose, but that's really all you see. Um, oh, wow, yeah, we could make like a David and Goliath kind of situation. Um, I'm gonna make this other figure because I had the real estate for it. Um, I'm gonna make this other guy kind of big. So they'll make this a, a shorter figure. I'm gonna make this other guy a larger figure. So I don't have to make the head, I don't need to make him that much taller to make him look sizable. So I'm gonna Teddy, do it. Oh, excuse me, Teddy, did you have uh, your hand up? You have a question? Or is maybe that's- uh... Uh, No. Oh, okay. I thought I thought, or maybe that's Alden or Henry. I thought I saw a hand up. All righty. Oh, it's mine. <laughs> Stacy, do you have a question? You know what? Excuse me, guys. Yeah. So, uh, and everybody knows if you have a question, you can just like turn your, you can just, just ask it. <laughs> All right. So I'm doing an oval for the head and the oval is at an angle. And so I'm going to quickly add the hairline for the head. So I'm breaking the, I'm basically breaking the head down into like face and hair. And then because he's so startled, um, the center of his torso from his, like basically the front of his rib cage down to his pelvis, it almost looks like a, a necktie. See that it almost looks like a necktie. Um, mm -hmm. His head is further back and his body's coming forward. So there's a pelvis. And then his right leg juts forward, hip to knee, knee to ankle. The knee to ankle back is backing, um, it's not vertical. It's actually angling down to the right. And then there's a little triangle for the leg. Hip to knee. This leg is pretty straight, but there is a subtle change of direction. Hip to knee, knee to ankle. And then his foot is clearly off the ground. So I'm gonna put that little, that indication that his heel is, his heel is up. So the, even though they're like kind of little simple marks, um, they actually can be filled, filled with like a lot of useful information. Um, really? all right, so his right arm, shoulder to elbow and then elbow to wrist is straight up in the air. Like that arm is vertical. And then a little trick that I do is I use a, um, like for the palm of the hand, I use a block, um, almost like you would have a hand warmer, like just use a rectangle and then you can do the thumb here and then one, two, three, four. I see the uh, fingers and groups of like the middle, the, the ring finger and the middle finger are the same length. And then the middle finger is the longest and the pinky is an add-on. So watch, watch how I do this one. So I will do shoulder to elbow. Then we'll do elbow to wrist. Then I put in a little rectangle, get the thumb that's on the inside. And then I do the index finger middle finger, ring finger first. So I go medium, large, medium, and then I add a small one at the end. Uh. And I kind of like may have overdone the middle finger. Don't do that. Don't do that. Please don't do that. <clears throat> and here we go. Then I can just add a little L shape for the nose. A little circle for the mouth, a little dot for the eye. So where are we at now, Stace? 225? We have on the dot 223. 223, right. So we'll do, um, we'll do one more grouping. And then we'll do the trees, which is the whole point. Yes. Exercise. Excellent. Yeah, and if you guys feel like moving ahead, you know, don't let me stop you. <clears throat> okay, the next group. I can zoom out a little bit here. Um, I'm going to do the telescope guy. Well, let's just do the telescope guy. All right, so I'm doing this guy down here. He's got like a binoculars. These look great. Stacey, are you getting these photos? Yeah, hold I am. Up. Oh, no, 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 no. I just missed that. Great. <clears throat> uh, Declan. 
Hold on. And then Bryce, Bruce, sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Declan, very nice. He should be scared. Bruce. Oh, I like how you filled that page. Thank you. Very nice. And Finn. Oh, this is sweet. Move that up just a little bit, Finn, and to the other side. There you go. Good, 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 good. Thank you. Um, all right, so I'm going to keep going with, um, I'm going to do the, the telescope guy. He could be holding up anything. Um, but I'm going to use an oval for the head. I'm going to subdivide that into hair and face, you know, hair and skin. Then has the interesting thing about this guy is that his is like the the arc of his back i think is very is very interesting um so we go from you know basically his seventh cervical vertebrae which is like the base of the neck it's going to angle down um through the base and it's going to get into the pelvis which is right here i'm going to add a little triangle that triangle allows you to build the legs so both of these legs like hip to knee is coming forward and then hip to knee is coming forward again and then knee to ankle goes far, you know, goes back really far. That's kind of like the stand leg. And then knee to ankle on the next leg is actually angling forward. So it almost looks like he's walking, which is, oh yeah. Imagine that you wouldn't be walking if you were using a, a, you know, a telescope, but um, I'm going to do a You're walking with poor posture. Right, exactly. Um, these loosely follow the center of the form and not necessarily the bones. Um, where the, the center line really does follow, the, um, the bones follow the center of the form um, is, is in the, um, the humerus. So it's like from your shoulder to elbow, that really is the angle of the bone. Now, elbow to wrist, it's a little bit more complicated because of the, you know, your forearm has two bones in there but you don't have to necessarily think about that right now. Um, the left arm is lower, so it goes shoulder to elbow. And then elbow to wrist. I think that's a little dot of the hand. Um, the telescope or the, uh, the periscope, I guess it's a periscope. You got a little indication where the eye, nose, and then we're just gonna stack these rectangles. So it's gonna be a thin rectangle stacked to a medium sized rectangle stacked on top of a large rectangle. I mean, you could even put like a telefocus lens at the end. <laughs> he's getting, he's, he's, <laughs> looking, he's looking at the moon. I was telling the other guys that you can, um, when you are kind of looking up at the moon, depending on if it's waxing or waning, I guess you can see the features of the moon more effectively when it's like a crescent moon or not full. Like when it's full, it's almost too bright. But I'd still want to see it on a full moon. <clears throat> Cool. Looks good to me. <clears throat> okay, so now, gentlemen, one minute warning on the on this figure. And again, if you're going really fast, you can you know draw more of the other ones that are exposed. Just let me know. Let me letting you know if you guys do eventually hit the weight room, and you start doing um, you know. Uh, curls, bicep curls, um, your, your form should look a little better than this. You want to get like a slightly wider stance, a little bit more stable. And then no, we don't have to get into weightlifting issues right now, but that guy doesn't have exactly the best form ever. Um, okay. See so, that, Teddy? Whoa, nice, dude. Is Hold there... that up. Just Actually, that's perfect, Teddy. Keep it right there. And thank you. Um, all right, so we are, we're going to stay on land 
but we're gonna move over. Um, we're gonna move okay. over into some. Uh, Hold that still, Ajax. And a little toward you, back toward you a little bit, and freeze. Thank you. Nice. So, and Declan. These are great, guys. Really well done. And if I don't get your picture, um, go ahead and keep that up, Bruce. If for some reason I don't get it, or um, you want some comments from Mr. Twist, send them directly to Mr. Twist as well. Yeah, you can always you can always email the school, email Mitchell School. Um, okay, so the next part is gonna it's gonna be amazing because we're actually gonna start with stick figure properties in terms of finding the branches of the tree. And then we're going to fill them out the same way we kind of did with the um, with the um, both the the turtle and the saw shark. So what I was just thinking is, is that the the sketch that we're about to do, you can add these trees um, to your figure drawings if you wanted to. And then there's a last there's a, like, kind of like a final component that might be kind of fun. Um, all right, so these are very naturalistic trees. And I am going to make my tree larger, but I, this is a, this is a cypress tree. We're gonna do the cypress tree first. Um, then we're gonna do this like um, oak tree after. And I know that we're going from like, kind of like cartoon illustrations um, to, you know, what is like basically a very realistic tree. We're gonna, we're gonna use the same, uh, <clears throat> same like concepts in order to do it. Um, so, and it's more fun to make a composition anyway. So this is the ground plane. And I'm gonna start with like the trunk of the tree. And unlike other trees, the cypress tree, the branches start really low to the ground. So we have a trunk, but the trunk is like relatively short until the branches start. So if you, if you kind of bear with me here for a second, the, the trunk is gonna go all the way up to the middle. <laughs> But you just don't really you don't really see the trunk because it's mostly covered with branches. Whereas the tree up here that you can see, it's like so much of the trunk is exposed, and then the branches are at the top. So I just I thought this guy I thought this tree would look good next to um, my character here. <clears throat> so let's just go up and we'll do the left side. We'll do the right side, and um, what this is amounts to is more shading than it is outlining. So sometimes you start with the outline like we did with the saw shark and then you fill it in. Other times you start shading and you fill the outlines in with the shading. And I'll show you what I mean. So there's the, uh, the, the trunk and it goes into the ground. And then I'm gonna come up and see this branch on this side. So I'm starting from the middle and I'm actually beginning shading. I'm gonna shade this branch. now. I'm gonna come up and do the left side. So I can imagine there's a branch in there. The cypress tree is like kind of an evergreen is my understanding. And um, the, the branches are really kind of steep. So they're kind of coming up and I'm gonna let that go right behind my guy here. <clears throat> now, the overall shape of the cypress reminds me of a, of a feather, like a feather of a bird. And you know, one I made the suggestion in the past where you just like, if you wanted to, you could very lightly um, finish the shape. When I say lightly, I mean like super lightly. Like just you know that it's going to end where it's going to end, and you know how thick it is. But the the exercise really is about building from the inside out, not from the outside in. So. Granted, if you know that there's an outside, you can still anticipate it, but the style of drawing here is about the inside out. And as you fill this in, you can see this next branch is here. And you know, there's these little holes, there's these little gaps in the tree where like, you know, the um, branches and the, the leaves don't cover it up. So you wanna kind of protect those. I would start making them like big initially, and then you can kind of come in and make them super small. So we don't know much about the cypress tree. We don't know what the little details are. Um, we're thinking in general terms. So I know there's a dense middle that could be a tree trunk. It could be a branch. 
We're coming up the side here. See the top of another branch. It's kind of like a fun shading exercise. And you won't believe like how realistic um, it looks um, starting from the interior um, toning and then uh, blend and then working to the out outside instead of you know inside out and we're actually going to be able to do that with some of our characters <clears throat> okay 234 so we got we have uh 10 minutes that's this is plenty of time all right so here i go i'm thinking right side left side it's not necessarily symmetrical um, in fact it's actually not symmetrical but it's even on both sides Filling out this tree, I'm you know observing. I'm observing. Um, my eyes on my drawing, and then it's connected. Then it's looking over at the reference. I'm looking at my drawing. Then I'm looking at the reference. I'm looking at my drawing. Looking at the reference. Keeping my pencil oriented in the area that I'm working on. <clears throat> and then you know the more your eye goes back and forth, the more details you're able to um, include. I'm gonna make this tree go around. Make this tree go around my telescope guy. Okay. Nice. This is good. This is gold. This is gold. <clears throat> How's it? How are you guys doing on it? Is anybody freaking out? Anybody's tree look good? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's not bad. That looks great. Cool. Um, if there's anything that I can do to help, you can hold it up and I can see if I can fill it out. Declan, that's great. Can you hold that up once again? And a little toward you. There you go. Well done. So I like that you um, incorporate it in the drawing with the uh, figures. And if this tree, if this tree didn't uh, feel good, the uh, the next one you got a second try. And the next one I think is a little bit easier. I started with this one because I thought it matched my telescope guy better. But we're gonna try another one. Excellent. All right, here we go, boys. I'm gonna do this tree. It's gonna be kind of off. I'm gonna try this guy. I'm gonna make him a little smaller and make this tree off in the distance. So hang out. Um, I'm going to start with the trunk. When I say off in the distance, I think I'm going to make it kind of small. So I'm going to start with the rectangle of the trunk that's exposed. <clears throat> and then I'm going to make it, you know, all the trees kind of gracefully transition into the roots into the ground. So they're kind of curvy on both sides. And then, oh, I hope I didn't hope I didn't make it too big. I think we're going to be fine. All right, so I'm going to make my tree again. I'm making this tree smaller. And so I get the it's classic tree trunk. I mean, this is like an oak tree. Um, the nice thing about trees is that if um, if your tree trunk is too long, it still looks like a tree. If it's too short, it still looks like a tree. So I'm going to spread out my branches. One, two, three little guys. One, two, three little guys. And then this is where this is where um, I think the um, the help is going to come. In the same way that we saw the the leaf shape of our cypress, we're gonna see the dome shape of the oak. So you put this semicircle along the top. <clears throat> <clears throat> And then it's a matter of filling in that dome with clusters of trees, of leaves rather. 
tree leaves. Now, I think you are gonna see some branches perhaps. You might see some branches, you know, spaced out up there in the canopy. And again, the silhouette, the reason for doing silhouettes is when you have something that's so unbelievably complex. I mean, what I'm, what I'm drawing here is you could like hundreds of thousands of leaves, but I'm, I'm reducing all of those leaves into little clusters. And those little clusters are arranged nicely um, in a half dome, like in a, in a semicircle. So all I'm, all I'm charged with, my only goal is to kind of fill out the shape of the dome so that they can look like, they can look like the tree. And you can go out in, you can go out in your neighborhood and you can look at a, a tree that's like, looks so unbelievably complex and all of, and if you just copy the silhouette it will, you will be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Trevor, it is 2.40. I'm sorry, uh, yes, 2.40. 2.40, it is 2.40, all right. And I think we'll have time for it, but one of my, what I, one of the things I was hoping to do was to take the stick figure and to fill out the stick figure just with our imagination. And we may not have time, but I'm going to try. So I'm kind of paying attention to like the unique edge well, of the, of the tree. Anymore. Just... What was that, Brennan? And gentlemen, I recognize that if you, it's, it's getting close to the end. Oh, look at that tree. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, the smaller, the, the, the smaller. It is the, oh, Teddy. Uh, the, the faster you can shade it in, but you can also shade in big objects um, by not, you know, by not going as, as heavy, like not going. One as sec, heavy. Teddy. That dome looks good, man. Thank you. Very nice. Yeah, Teddy, I don't know if you're aware, your hand is up. <laughs> Look at these things. These I are keep good. thinking it's a question. Declan, <laughs> you have a, a whole composition going there. Nice. So I don't know if this makes any sense to do, but if you wanted to do it for fun. Let's see that, <clears throat> Henry. A little further back toward you, just a little bit, Henry. Yes. Thank you. These are really nice pages. So um, we did this little stick figure for the guy and you could, if you wanted to, attempt to fill him out. So I can like make his rib cage, I can make his hips. I can like use the directional, use the directional um, straight lines to fill out the character. In the same way that we filled out the tree, you can fill out the silhouette of the guy. Now he just like my guy just looks like a looks like a burglar. Yes. <laughs> he just needs some type of a bag to put the jewels in. He's just trying to he's trying to steal he's trying to steal the uh, he's mugging him the the mystery of the the mystery of the moon. Trevor, that would be you. You know what they say, guys, boys, it's um, 
every piece, every art piece is a self portrait. <clears throat> and they say that because um, you can't help but put your own characteristics into your art. Um, it's like handwriting. It's just like it, it's an expression. It's you're you're expressing yourself. And everyone people talk about you know being expressive in art. And it's like all you have to do is make it, and you will be expressing. Um, you'll be expressing yourself. You don't have to worry about that part. Yeah, or expressing your own twist on whatever art piece it is you are working on. Indeed. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's kind of hard. I guess when you fill things in, it makes it look like nighttime. And when you put a moon in the sky, it looks like nighttime. Mm. But I don't want to make I, I don't want to make the sky dark as as dark as my trees, because then you can't see the trees. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't work. Maybe I'll darken up my, let's be forced to darken up my trees again. Bye, boys, good to see you. Bye, Mr. Great you. week. Have a great week, great week, everyone. Get home safe. Stacy, that was fun. Yeah, that was really, really great. So this class, um, ends at what time uh it ends at 2 45. So, okay uh, you know we basically finished right on the nose i feel like the timing of this class went exceptionally well today yeah yeah and i think that the work that was produced was great also very good yeah <clears throat> all right stace i'm gonna end the uh i'm gonna stop the share okay and then i will talk to you um, I guess off of the Zoom. Okay.